Hi, Cliff Hall here, and today I'm going to take a look at controlling web audio API systems with React and Redux middleware. Now, if you've created React and Redux applications before, you know there's a standard unidirectional data flow pattern where the UI dispatches an action, which is handled by a reducer, which returns a new application state. The UI is then apprised of that new application state and reorganizes itself accordingly. Well, what do you do if the action needs to trigger some interaction with a complex system like a socket for talking to a remote system or a collection of web audio components which we need to create sound or we need to monitor the sound. Well, those are not serializable objects and they've got no place in a reducer. We handle those in middleware and so that's going to be the focus of this application. We're going to simulate a touch tone keypad which triggers two different tones each time you press a key. That's the dual tone multi-frequency system to get us started, I've created a basic React application which shows us a touchtone keypad. And when you click on one of the keys, it shows us the two frequencies it would like to trigger. Before we get into the code, let's review DTMF so that we have the basic information that we need to develop the audio portion of our application. Here in this Wikipedia article, we find the key information that we need this table shows us the frequencies that each button on the keypad should trigger. So when we press the one key, we'll be triggering an oscillator at 697 hertz and an oscillator at 1209 hertz. Two triggers the same row frequency and a different column frequency, 1336, and so forth. So you can see that we are triggering those same values here. So now we know everything we need to know about DTMF and we've seen our application in its current state where it's capable of asking for the right tones to be played when we press a button. Let's take a quick review of the application code at this point and see how that's happening and then understand the gap to actually making those sounds with middleware. And we're going to start with a quick check of how we're actually taking the DTMF information that we saw and encoding it in such a way that we can make a keypad use it. So recall there were frequencies for each row, there were frequencies for each column, we've encoded those in some constants here. Then each key triggers a row and a column, so we'll create an array that has that value, that set of tones for each key. And then the keypad is comprised of rows of keys, and so what we're exporting from our constants file here for use by the component that's going to render this keypad is a array of rows. So here is an array for the first row. It contains an array which has a label and the array of tones associated with that particular key and so forth. So let's have a look at how we're rendering that. Now this is a standard uh, React application. You can see right now we, are, we don't have the Redux connected. We're just basically rendering this app component into the div that we have set up for it. So component-wise we have app and keypad key. So let's look at app first. In the render method we're rendering a styled keypad uh, which is going to give us the flex box that contains these keys and it's going to call this render keypad function and it's going through that keypad uh, constant that we have with all of the rows each of which has a 
three arrays with a label and an array of tones. So when we do keypad map, row and row index into uh, for, for each entry, for each row, we're going to do a styled keypad row, which is going to be a flex box in row direction that's going to contain these buttons. And, of course, uh, because of React needing a unique key for every component when you're rendering in a loop so that it can deal with, with uh, knowing what needs to be updated, we're going to give it the row index. And inside of that styled keypad row, we're going to map on key. So remember, we got a row, and it's got three arrays. And so we're going to say, and each one of those is going to be called key for the, for the moment. And we're going to render a keypad key. Uh, the unique key for that component in the DOM is going to be uh, the label. And we're also going to call label that same thing, key zero. Remember, we have a label and we have them the array of tones. Array of tones is key sub two, or sub one, the second position in the array. And we're going to pass keep add key a handle click function, which at this point is just going to accept the tones array, and it's going to open an alert box with the tones zero and one, so that when we click the button, we see this. Look at keypad key, and that is just a functional component. It takes props, destructures from that label, tones, and handle click, which we passed it, and returns a styled keypad button. And that, uh, again, is the, a button that is square and has a big font and has no outline. And it's going to have an on click, which is a function that's going to call handle click, passing it the tones array. And it's going to show that label that we passed in. So that's where we are now. What's the gap? We need to trigger an action that will then be um, handled and, and cause two oscillators to trigger those tones. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a web audio system that has a couple of oscillators and output all wired up. And we're going to create a middleware that is going to instantiate that audio system and handle any actions that tell it to trigger those tones. Now we've already got the action creator set up. Play DTMF pair and it takes tones and uh, since it, of course we have no reducer because we're going to use middleware. Now in the interest of time I've gone ahead and written a class called Touch Tone which will implement the Web Audio API system for creating, amplifying, and connecting a row oscillator and a column oscillator. And it has in its constructor, it gets the audio context, builds those oscillators and connects them. Has a play function which accepts the array of tones that we want it to play. And we'll load up those oscillators with those tones and play them. And it's going to uh, after that, call a stop function, which says stop this after a second. And so now all we need to do is write the middleware. Now the middleware is just a simple function that accepts the, uh, the store, the Redux store, as an argument. And it will return a function which accepts the next piece of middleware or reducer just accepts a function which takes an action. And so that function then calls next, which is the next function uh, in the chain, and passes it the action. So if, if we receive an action in the middleware, 
we can either do something with it or not, but then we call next and pass the action along because middleware is set up in a chain. So let's go ahead and do that. To begin with, we'll just create a simple function. And we'll do what we need to do with it, which is to return a function that takes the next in the chain which accepts an action we're going to want to instantiate our class here we're going to in this function we can do the same thing that we generally do in reducer which is to look at the action and see if we need to do anything with it and so get the action that we're interested in and when we're done we're going to call that next function next middleware in the chain and we're going to pass it the action and that's all we need to do except actually want to play the tones tones are passed in on the action now I've gone ahead and I have instantiated the provider and the store with no reducer but the audio middleware and in the app Instead of just opening a um, alert box, I'm actually mapping dispatch to props, getting the play DTMF pair action, and passing it to the key as play tones. So if everything is hooked up right, we will hear DTMF tones. you found that useful uh, controlling the web audio API with react redux and middleware until next time I'm Cliff Hall happy coding